So did you make this up? Yeah, I yeah I I did. I I just went for a walk, like half an hour ago, and I made I made the ca whole campaign. So, <laughs> are we not meant to make up characters, no? Or yeah, but I'm keeping it fairly rules light. So I've got the characters not here. They're pre today. they're pre made. Right. Okay. So you're both playing. You're playing brother, uh, brother and sister. So Michelle okay. is playing Janice, um, who's proficient with a crossbow and a dagger, and then Sean's coming in with uh, a, a a boy, a farmhand, a young man called Bert, and he's proficient with a longsword. So we have Janice and Bert. Is everyone okay with that? Can I be a boy? Um, what? <laughs> Can I be a boy? Um, yeah, you can be if you want. Can I be a girl? Okay. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> okay. okay. Okay, so what's... Okay, so what's... Better in the works. So, okay, so... Oh, I, like, I like being girls and boys. I am I now... Like I, I okay. am now on the same character, but right. my, my name is now Bertina. Bertina. And... Okay. <laughs> In fairness, a girl, a girl could be called Jamie as well. I like using names that can be either or. So do you want to go Sam. with Jamie? You're the boy now. We, we were Jamie. I want to be. I want to be a boy. Called I Jamie. Be a boy called Jamie. And okay. He goes by Jammers sometimes. Okay. He goes by Jammers. Is Bertie? Bertina. Bert? I don't know if it's a real name. Is, but look, what would? Okay, I've changed my. I've changed Aunt Jamie's sister. Huh? I've changed. Just I've changed. Bertie. I've changed my. I'm, I've changed my mind. So, so what we're gonna do is, you both own a farm, okay? Jamie is. Oh, okay. He's actually Bertina's father. You're playing Bertina's father, and uh, Bertina is in her twenties, and she's a more skilled with like she's more of a farm hand, but she's she's also be capable with like close range weapons and so on. And basically, what's happened mm -hmm. is um, someone has attacked your farm, destroyed the farm. And kidnapped uh, the uh, basically your mother and your 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 wife, who's called Paula. Okay. And Number one, have Paula. we brought in the hay? Sorry. Have we brought in the hay? Because the first thing we need to do is bring in the hay. You brought okay. in you brought That's in the hay. One. There was no there was no issues with that. And then the farm <laughs> burnt down. The hay caught fire, and Paula uh, has gone. Sure. Paula has gone missing. And um, you've you've been hearing from the the local town that there's been a lot of abductions in the area. So you make your way out of the farm and you head towards uh, the the, ma the the place that seems the most obvious place to start with, which is a major city in the area. So it's starting to come to evening time, and you arrive at the city of Darkshire. Um, you're both quite cold and tired. Very huh? what? Ominous name. It's a very <laughs> ominous name. We'll be going to that city after someone's been kidnapped. Well, it seems like the most obvious it's place. It's the to go. best town. It's the <laughs> best. <laughs> town. <laughs> well, you Otherwise, decided to live there. Well, not you me. I I had to go wherever you went because I'm your bloody daughter. I didn't have any choice in this. <laughs> Darkshire is the best <laughs> town, and we'll hear no more about it. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to be here anymore. And look, now I told you, it's a horrible name. I already told you, the horrible name. And then people were getting kidnapped. It was all the name. The first thing when we came here, it was called Darkshire. It's like, oh, I'd be a lovely place to go and live and set up a farm. No, not because people get kidnapped there. Is it Darkshire or Darkshire? Darkshire. It is Darkshire. It's a shire that is dark. But it's like a, it's like. But if you're like, in England, it's more like a, an English, like medieval style city, maybe even a bit Victorian. Um, looks a little bit shambly in places. Uh, the sun is starting to go down. As I said you're both hungry and tired, and you approach one of the first. You come through the main gates, which seem to be unguarded, and the streets just everyone start heading into the into their houses and so on. And you come up to the first inn that you you see, which is called Gut Rot Inn. <laughs> Gut Rot. This this place sounds really? lovely, doesn't it? <laughs> you know, amazing. how many yeah. times have I got to approve this to you? <laughs> Like, <laughs> <laughs> it sounds very. Bertina does not like this town. As I'm just saying that now, in case no one doesn't know, isn't been getting that vibe. <laughs> Many the time, I'll... Jammers and Paula went to this bar or inn, or I can't remember what it was, and just enjoyed themselves. Pub. I'll reluctantly go in because they all got dragged in by her father, Jamie. Okay. To see the lads, like. Okay, so you. Which... you... You go inside How and there's old a. Is huh? Jamie? Jamie is. Jamie? Uh, let me think now. 
Jamie I is in his, in his 50s, and that would make Bertina, roughly <laughs> speaking, in her 20s. So there's, okay. a, there's a fire in the corner, uh, like a, what do you call it, a fireplace. There's a couple of guys there drinking, playing cards, just two or three of them there. And there is a man behind the counter, the main reception area, um, who looks like he's the, uh, the owner of the establishment. And, he says and is there anybody that I would know that's sitting down in the bar? Um, could you roll a d20 for me? And uh, we'll make that a... I guess, perception check. I've got a 19 anyway, so it should be okay. Okay. So, you, yeah, you get a very good roll. And you recognize one of the people sitting at the table playing with the, the three guys. You don't recognize the other two guys. They're, they're a bit older, but you recognize one of like your school friends called Kathleen. And she seems to be okay. sitting there at, at playing the cards. She's wearing like a hood over her head, kind of trying to conceal that she's a woman playing cards. Oh. And then uh, the main guy uh, sees you look like you're looking around. You're both standing there, and the, and the main guy is like, "Greeting, travelers. How can I help you? Looking for a place to stay for the night? I'm looking for my wife, actually. Your wife? What happened to your she wife? She was kidnapped. I see. And do you have any proof of this? I mean, I'm sorry. I, I'm sorry. I, my apologies. My apologies. We've had a lot. We're of, here. We've, had a lot of, we've had a lot of shady characters. <laughs> a lot we've of had, kidnappings. <laughs> we've had a lot of shady characters going around here recently. A lot of unnatural happenings. I'm um, just a little on edge. Uh, my name is Jamie. <laughs> I've been here for years. <laughs> yeah, I'm we're not a drunk. shady character. There's okay, a lot, I I don't, what, I'm, what I mean is there's been a lot of shady characters coming through here recently, <laughs> and uh, I'm just a bit on, a bit on edge. Um, okay. I'm I am the like it, there's always room for a a, a fellow uh, fellow villager of Darkshire. My name is Igor Gutrot. Pleased to meet you. Igor Gutrot. Igor Gutrot. I feel like I should know you already. <laughs> 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 I never made the effort to know people in this pub. It's a horrible place. Let, Dirty, me roll, let me roll a d20 on that one. Oh my god. Okay, so I roll a 2. Um, he starts to sweat and looks around nervously and I'm like, yes, yes, of course, of course. Uh, uh, of course, Jack. You, you know, we're, yes, I was a friend of your father's, yes. But I don't think we've ever met in person. Me? Mm-hmm. It's not Jack, Mr. Jack? Igor. Uh, yes, but to the, but anyway, to the I matter, think Igor has uh, taken Paula. I'm questioning if we even know this guy, Dad. We do, Bertie. Okay. If you say so, it means you know best as in where I should live and what I should do with my life. Yeah. And the uh, the other people playing cards kind of look over at you like you you know it's kind of giving you this uh, like laser stare like you know pipe down, be quiet. So you're making a lot of noise. Yeah. And they go back to their okay. cards. She sees her good friend Kathy. Then I should see someone I know, seeing as I've been here for a lot longer. Okay. Frequent every night afterwards. One of my good for friends. What? Okay, so roll uh, another <laughs> roll, roll a d20 there, Michelle, for Jamie. Okay. And again, I guess we'll go with perception. I, just don't, I actually don't remember my, uh, my friend's name. Kathy. Your friend's name is Kathleen. <laughs> my best friend, Kathleen. Yeah. Kathy. Um, I got a 12. Kathy. You got a 12. Kath Mm-hmm. Okay, so um, you think you recognize one of the men, but you're not entirely sure. So what do I do? It's up to you guys. And the 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 uh, the owner of My... the inn, the owner there is sitting there, um, kind of tapping his finger on the counter and pace, and then like starts to pace around a little bit. Um, That's, I think we should inquire him a little bit and say what's up with him. Why are you so nervous? What do you think? Well, he said he was nervous because of all the shady characters, and he also tried to pretend that he knew me and called me by the wrong name. So I think that he's trying to pretend that he's been a villager for a long time, but he's actually got nothing to do with Darkshire. Yeah, I don't recognize this guy. I don't recognize him either. Hmm. I do think that I recognize somebody sitting down, though. Okay, so what, okay. You, can do, what you can do in this case uh, is you can roll a insight check. Okay. 
to, which will give you more information about if someone's trying to hide something or not, basically, what their intention is. That'll be a D20. And who's doing that? Um, well, it depends. Whoever wants to do it. I think it makes more sense for Michelle to because she's the older character, so she'd have a bit more backing in terms oh, of I only got 10. A 10. Okay, you're not, you're not sure either yeah. way. You can't read to discern can the I... origin problem. Can I? I don't know how this works. So, mm -hmm. like, the guy that I kind of recognize, do I go, could I, like, go over to him or could I ask Sean or Bertie if she recognizes, recognizes the guy? Yeah, you can do all of those things. It's like, okay, I don't want to just, like, whatever you, oh, whatever you can do. I want to just for a sec. Whatever you can do in real life, you can do, you can do here. Is there anything, See, is there I any problem with us, like, off. sorry, is there any problem with us, like, doing a check and then me doing a check, like, it's kind of doing uh, the same thing twice, then... No, but more time will pass, and, and, and it has to kind of make sense. So, for example, if you were to do it again, it would mean, like, maybe you get closer to the counter and, like, look him dead in the eyes. <laughs> so, you know, it kind of goes that kind of way. So it's a bit, yeah. it, gets a bit, it starts getting a bit more awkward. Yeah. Nice. Okay, yeah, I wouldn't do that anyway. If, if if my dad says she's not really sure about the guy, then I wouldn't investigate so that any further. I see a guy over there that I think I recognize. Like, I don't want to go up to him and get all up in his face if it's not him. But I think I recognize him. Do you recognize him, Bertie? Uh, no, if you're not sure, I, I don't see much point in me trying as well. It would be more like, or less. No, no, an it would guy... be, It'd be more or less an automatic fail for Bertina. Wait, because, no, because I'm talking age. about the guy. I, I'm talking about the guy sitting down. Yes, the guy no, he's a, no, he's 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 shady. much yes, he's much older than than Kathy. Like, I think he's, I, he's in a different age group. Like uh, think, Bertina wouldn't know of this character anyway. You're just getting senile. Nah, I think I know him. <laughs> well, go over and talk to him. If you know him. And for the sake of Paula, I think I need to. You know, she's been kidnapped and all. Okay. Let's just emphasize the fact that so not only, was, but not only let's emphasize the fact that not only was Paul, Paula taken, but your farm was burnt down. So you're actually yeah. you're actually out of pocket as well, or out of a house to stay. So it's not just a kidnapping, but so so what are you gonna do, Michelle? I'm gonna go over to the guy to see is he the guy that I recognize or the okay. guy that I know. Okay. My old time um, friend. Yeah. So you you go over to the table and you look at him. He's looking at you, and you have to. What do you say? What do I say? Yeah. Um, do, <laughs> can I table. just give him a name? Or... Uh -huh. Can I give him a name? Yeah. Okay. Um, I'm going to call him John. Okay, John. Okay, so introduce... And I'm going to go up and be yeah. like, John, is that you? It's me, Jamie! Okay, very good. And could I get <laughs> a... Um... Actually, no, I think it's me for, for a roll, actually. I'm going to do really? a roll. Yep. And, yeah, and could I get you to roll d d20, please? I got 18. 18, okay, very good. Okay, so you go over to the man, and <coughs> you, you, you see him there. He has a very pale uh, sk uh, skin, shade of skin. Um, he doesn't look very well. And you do recognize him to be uh, John, um, who was one of the shopkeepers in the town. But you feel a chill going down your back. Um... As you heard from the town... Actually, can I get another roll, please? A d20. You're going to do a history check. For me? Yep. Five. Five. Okay, so you feel a chill down your back because you've heard rumors uh, of John, the shopkeeper, that something uh, is not right about him. There was something occurred, um, but you just can't recall what it is. So you recognize the character, but he looks far more unwell and unfriendly than before. And you also have a, a bad feeling about just about him in general. And um, he looks at you as like, Jamie, what are you doing here? What's it to you? I can't you see I'm busy. And then Igor's like, now, now, yeah, gentlemen, sure. gentlemen, please, please, everyone's welcome here. They're just tra they're just passing through. They're just looking for a room. And he just kind of John just snorts at Igor and goes back to his cards and starts to ignore you. Doesn't sound okay? like a friend of yours, anyway. He was a friend. He 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 was at the wedding. At the wedding, was mm. he? I wouldn't mm. remember that. <laughs> <laughs> Why not? You were there. <laughs> was I? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <clears throat> Does he? Do you think he knows anything about this? Do you want to ask him anything? I don't think we're gonna be very fair with this guy. Jamie. 
John knows me. John knows me. I can get through to John. Okay. So okay. You'll, need, you'll need to use, um, I'd say, uh, a persuasion roll. How do I? That's a d20 again. Which one? D20. And also you kind of combine this with what you're going to say to make it persuasive. And if it if sounds good to me, I'll give you advantage on the roll. Wait a second. I'm not sure if I rolled it or not. Just roll it again if you're not sure. Um, no, I didn't roll it. It was only a five. Okay. So <laughs> I don't think it even matters what you say to John at this point. He's like, look, I'm getting tired of this. It's late. I want to, I want to play this game and hang out with my friends here and you're just starting to irritate me. Do you know what? Um, can I? Obviously, I've been living in this town for a very long time, mm -hmm. and I must have a lot of friends and stuff. So, mm -hmm. can I go to one of my friends' houses? Yes, There's you no can. There's no point in staying here. Yeah, that's Everyone's a good idea. Just being weird. Okay, mm -hmm. so you head out, and you go to one of your friends who helps you out on the farm, and we'll say uh, you go to Richard's house. It's quite a walk from where you are, Richard. and you go to the rich Richard's house. You can see the lights are on inside, and you come to the door. And um, the the door is barred closed, but the lights are on. You can hear some some noise inside. What's the story, Richard? Is he a farmer as well, or he's some? No, he's someone who helps you out on the farm on occasion. Like, say, if it's the if it's time to harvest, he'll help you out. You pay him pay him x amount for the work he does. So it's more like a summer laborer. Um, carpenter. carpenter. He's a good man. Good. Is he old? <laughs> hmm. Is he old? He's no, he's younger than I am now, but he's he's a good man. In forties or something, is he? Yeah. Oh, okay. Why are his doors barred up? That's very odd. I'd say he's just That's afraid. That's very odd now. Afraid of what? Darkshire. <laughs> is anyone going to try to enter this building, or we're we just going to stand outside looking at it? All right, I bang, door, I'm please? banging on the door. And I'm, I'm yelling Not for him. I'm yelling, Richie. Okay. Why are you so ignorant? Okay. You hear some. You hear some commotion. You hear some, you hear some commotion inside, and he dims the lights, and then he opens up the door a jar. It's like Jamie, not so loud. What is wrong with you? Come in quick before someone sees you. And you both. You both settle into his small house. Come on, he, he shuts the door behind you like really loud, and then and locks the bolts as quickly as can. It's like you know. Do you, do you not know that Darkshire is not safe? Have you not heard of what's been going on? What are you doing here? Well, yeah, I mean, my mom's gone. I know exactly what that it's not safe out there. Okay, so he starts to get, he starts to get, he starts to get a depressed expression on his face. And um, he says that some, something has changed in the town recently, and there's been a lot of rumors going around about vampires. vampires. People, people disappearing in the night, raids on, on, on isolated um uh, communities and things like that so he wouldn't dare to go out at night Does he know anything about these vampires? Um, yes, that they they can look, like from what he understands, they are not like, they don't look like supernatural monsters or anything, that they can just, they can be your best friend they can be someone you can trust and then the next then the next day they just change and there's like a different person I, sorry, can I ask Richard if he knows Igor? Igor, um, yes, he's moved into the town recently, and he runs a, a like a, he he's basically taken over the old inn that was a uh, quite run down before he moved in, and he doesn't trust the character, um, and he's yeah. he rarely he rarely goes in there, but he does he does note the fact that uh, a lot of people do pass in there, especially new travelers coming to the town, and then and then yeah. It, that's all that they really sees and of them. What, um, he sees a lot of people going in, but not a lot of people going out. That's a bit odd. And he just tries to keep. He just, no, he, he just keeps hey, himself, you're... and he keeps himself and anyone he trusts, and he tries not to get involved in this. But when it's when it comes to nighttime, he just yeah, too, too many weird things have been going on. Yeah. His cat has gone missing. And um, oh no! All right, look, look, look. We we couldn't remember who he was. Your friend looked a bit odd and sick. I don't know. I got a feeling you know there's anything? more going on here than it seems. Do you know anything about John? Uh, yes. Jo uh, the, uh, yes, of course. Uh, John, the shopkeeper, yes. Um, unfortunately, he died three years ago. And then you remember from your, your you were there at the funeral. Like, oh, yes, he did die three years ago. 
Wait, but then who was the guy in the inn? You mm. recognize you recognize him as John. Yeah. Why do you ask such a strange question? Has it been three? Has it has three? Has it really been three years since you came to Darkshire? Time really flies. <laughs> Wait. Very strange. Did John die? John died three years ago. Of natural causes, yes. And I was at the funeral. Yeah, you know, you instantly remember this. It was a history check. You couldn't quite and couldn't quite grasp it, but now you instantly remember. You were there. He died like of a heart attack or old age or something like that, and he he, died, he was buried. And he was dead. And I I've only been in Darkshire three years. No, no, that the funeral was three years ago. Oh. Hmm. So you may not have been in and around the town in a while. Oh, I see. I know what you mean. Oh, okay. You may have came for the funeral. And no, then... it's 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 not it's nothing. It's nothing. You don't want to get him involved. Sure, Richard could be the vampire. Why would he be helping us so much if he's a vampire? John, I want to do a, uh, an insight check on him. Just okay. so he looked normal. Is there anything odd about him? Okay. The D20, is it? Yep. 17. Okay, you look at him, and as far as you can see from him, he just looks like a normal individual. You also note that he's wearing a cross on his uh, around his neck. And right. you, you get also a distinct smell of garlic around the place. Coming <laughs> off the fire. Can I do... <laughs> he's not afraid at all. He's not a vampire, for sure. <laughs> um, I don't know who he is. He says to you. Oh, he, says to Sorry, you that he, he says. He says to you that he's very. Re <laughs> he's very relieved to see such old friends in um, the town, and Aww. that Bertina. Bertina has become such a strong uh, young lass, and he says uh, to yeah. that he's ha that he's having. But given the situation, he's having trouble to trust anyone, and he wants you to uh, uh, to pass a test essentially of trust, that, so that he knows he can trust you. Okay. Okay. So he goes to his uh, fireplace. We also don't we don't have a lot of time for tests because our farm has been burnt down. We're on the run for Paula. And he said, "Don't worry, this is a very simple test. It won't take very long." And he, he goes to the fireplace where he has a stew brewing, and he takes out uh, a bowl and pours out two bowls or two cups and hands them both mm -hmm. one to you, uh, one to Bertina, and one to Jamie. And okay. he says, "If you drink from these, I I know if I can trust you." Well, what's in it? Okay. Um, I mean, it's hard to trust anyone, like you said yourself, so why should we trust you? Well, you make a fair <laughs> point, but at the end of the day, you're guests in my house, I've let you in, and if you don't want to, if you don't want to drink from my soup, then I'll have to ask you to leave. For That's old all friends? Good. Really? Well, can you tell I can't us... believe that. Can you tell no, us I'm offended, is... actually. Albert, you would you calm down? <laughs> I'm offended. How dare he? Look, he's my old, he's my old friend, I'll talk to him. Can you tell us what it is, at least? Um, because Bertie, Bertie has a very weak stomach, and even if it's not some sort of thing that could reveal that we're vampires, I don't want her being sick while I'm off looking for Paula, you know? Why are you telling me um, that? Shush. Shush. <laughs> if there's, if there's no so evil, if there's, if there's no <laughs> evil, if there's no evil in you, it won't harm you. Do a persuasion check, Michelle. Jamie. Well, my you should be able to persuade them. We don't need to do this, huh? Okay, I can try. You know, we're old friends. We, you know, we know this guy. I don't, I don't see the need for this. This is, this is just superstition, and I could why, get sick. I don't want to get sick. Could we <laughs> all have it? Um, we can all drink it together. I have no issue with that. Says Richard. Yeah. A but toast. A that? toast. A toast to friendship. Bertie. Okay. How about that, Bertie? He's having it. Okay, fine. Okay. I better not get have sick, Have some though. out of the same... Yeah, have some out of the same cup that I'm having it from. Okay, so you all take a cup, and Richard takes your cup first and drinks from it, and then he passes it to, jo to okay. Jamie. You drink from the cup, and it has, okay. a, str has a strong, bitter taste. Mm -hmm. And then you pass the cup to Bertina, and you drink from the cup. Yeah, I drink from it. Okay, you drink from the cup, and uh, again, it has a strong, bitter taste, and you start to feel a bit overpowered, and start to cough, start to feel a bit unwell, and you get an over overpowering, <laughs> pungent smell on your breath of, of garlic. Ugh, hate garlic. So, it's a garlic like soup. And <laughs> oh, Bertie, your stomach won't be well! <laughs> no, for Christ's <laughs> sake! You, you, you feel a little bit... <laughs> 
<laughs> you feel your, you feel your, Bert, Bertina feels her bowels loosening a little bit from just the, the overpowering oh. sensation, and and starts to make a run for I, the back I, door. Um, I stomach it all though, just to not be very suspicious. <laughs> so, um, Rich, Richard, Richard feels he can trust you now, and being a carpenter, he heads hey, into sir. the, he heads, heads into the back room, and he says, "Here's the, my secret project that I've been working on," and he goes into the back, and he hands you um, a selection of stakes. That you'd use for the piercing the heart of vampires and so on, and uh, mm. then he also reveals um, a ornate-looking crossbow. I said, this, he says, this is no ordinary crossbow. You can you can fire uh, both bolts, but also can fire the stake, the specially made stakes I have here, and it actually can fire three bolts at the same time. So it has like a, a bit of an automated fire to it, if you will. You can fire three bolts. Oh before, God, you can Richard. fire three bolts before even having to reload it. Hmm. Um, and obviously, I, I would only I give this to someone that, that I can trust. And I know that you're quite an impro- proficient uh, hunter. I know you're good with these uh, these kind of contraptions. So, if mm. you're on, if you're on a mission to rescue Paula, I think this may help you in your in your quest. Um. Hmm, thank you. Thank you so much. Are you going to come with us? No. <laughs> oh, I, I am a um, I'm, I'm a humble character. Come here. I saw I saw John in the inn. Yes, there's been a lot of strange happenings. I just try to stay away from the place. Do you not feel safer if you stayed with us? No. We've got the I, I'm, I've been here for many years, and I feel safest in my own home. <clears throat> hmm. Are you sure? Um, well, it sounds like you guys are thinking going to the inn, and I'm quite happy just here drinking my garlic soup. So, thank you, but no thank you. I wish you the best in uh, helping Paula. You can stay the night if you like, or... But beyond that, I, I think um, I'm quite happy where I am. Okay. He's not going to come, so would is there anywhere you might suggest that would we... You have, would you have any food or anything? Yes, of course. Can... So he hands you um, a canteen and he pours more of the soup into it and he hands you both like loaves of bread. <laughs> have you any spare crosses? Crosses? Um, I I believe I can spare oh, I have loads of garlic. So he gives you um, three or four <laughs> garlic each, and he finds an extra cross. He ha- extra cross and he gives it to Bertina. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Um, where you can search next? Well, of course, the inn is always an obvious place, but I mean, there is also concerns over uh, the mayor of Darkshire himself. Um. So I don't know how you. I don't know how you could. You probably could talk to him in the morning, but there's some something has changed about him. He's not the same person he was. Um, something tells me you won't see him in the morning. And uh, <laughs> yeah, well, he doesn't. Yeah, it's true. He doesn't go out much in the morning time. And to be honest with you, I haven't seen him in a while. It's been more his brother, bro- brother Vlad, has been running the show recently. I haven't seen the mayor out in public in quite a few months. Hmm. So is there anyone? And Do you know of anyone in the Vlad town that might know. be in conspiracies? Uh, there's as many conspiracies as there is stories. This, the, the, things have changed a lot since you've been away. Hmm. Things Vlad have gone, things have gone for the worse. Hmm? Still, this doesn't explain why someone would steal, like someone would burn down our farm and take mom away. I like, realize how much his name just sounds like a vampire. <laughs> like he's a vampire. Why are people always so superstitious around here? Like, just because his name's Vlad doesn't mean he's a vampire. Come on. Like, of course he does. That's so like prejudice, you know. So set in your. No, all I know is Richard is a good old friend, and Richard said that people have been going into the inn and they haven't been coming back out. That's that's suspicious. That's sus. Why don't we go and have a look around the back? See, is there any of the I don't know, like a a back way in, or maybe it's like. Somewhere keeping bodies at the air, kidnapping people, or and why did it, why well, did need, Igor Jamie's... pretend to know who I was? Huh? You need Jay- Why well, did uh... Igor pretend to know who I was? That's I can only speculate. I, I am only the facilitator here. But I was just saying to Sean there that if you <laughs> want to check around the back, uh, you'd need Jamie's permission because he's your father. <laughs> oh, <laughs> yeah. You... <laughs> <laughs> You think it's a good idea? You didn't ask for permission. Ugh. Yeah, I mean, I I will do whatever needs to be done to get Paula. To be honest, 
And I think we've wasted enough time. Mm -hmm. Yep. Excuse you, that was not a waste of time. What? You're barging into this guy's house, <laughs> an old friend. You, you, he gives you a crossbow for free, he crosses garlic, and you think we're wasting our time. <laughs> yeah, <right. laughs> well, you'll be paying for it. What? You'll be paying for it now after having that garlic soup. Okay, oh, so yeah. you, make your way to, you make your way to the back of uh, Got Right Inn, and could I get... And you can both make a roll on this. Um, could I get a perception check? Nine. Okay, Ten. Michelle. How much you got? Ten. 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 Okay, can I now get a stealth check from both of you? Eighteen. Okay. Twenty. Very nice. Okay, so you, you, spend, you spend a lot of time looking around the back. Stealthy man! You spend a lot of time looking around the back. Um, you don't elude any any uh, suspicion of any of the people inside, and you eventually come across a, a back door that appears to be bolted. Um, but not like locked, just bolted. Hmm. So we can open it? Yes. Yeah, of course we can. Okay, let's open that back door. So you open the back nice, door. Nice and, slow, nice and slowly now. And, okay, and nice and slowly, and you look, you look down the stairs, and it's just darkness. Hmm. As this is happening, a storm begins to pick up around you in the night. Uh, here. Let's go. <laughs> oh, your arthritis <laughs> can kick up if you don't if you stay out in that storm. Okay, so... <laughs> Jamie lights a torch to help light down, down the way. And as you go in, down, to the, the, down the staircase, it goes from being a wooden structure to more like a stone-like structure. And it immediately leads to a basement. And down there you find multiple um, coffins. Some are open, some are closed. Hmm. You then also find uh, uh, in the corner um, a pile of items that appear to be burnt. Okay. okay. Can I just have a, a, a look around and see is there anything watching us or... Yeah, you can. You can do a percep any, any yeah, per perception check. Three. Three. <laughs> no. Okay. As far as I'm concerned, there's The storm there. is so noisy outside you can't really tell and it's dark from the, the okay. thing. What do you think, Dad? Look, you don't we all burn files? things from time to time in the basement? Yeah, and we often have coffins in a dark basement under an inn. Well, no, the coffins are a little bit suspicious, but... I guess I'm actually going to ignore him. I'm just going to go over and check the, the pile of, okay. of ashes. You go over and check the pile of ashes, ashes, and it's immediately obvious that they are burnt clothes, and among the burnt clothes are several uh, crosses that appear to be uh, charred and rusted. Great, so the crosses don't do anything. Good to know. Okay, so basically what we have is a pile of ashes. So obviously people who are afraid of these vampires <clears throat> have been killed and rounded up. Um, rounded up and killed, I should say. Mm -hmm. So we know the crosses aren't doing anything. Maybe the guard helps, I don't really know. This has got to be superstition. There's a lot of superstition in this town, so the fact that these things are even helping us is very questionable. One thing we know is the crossbow will probably work. Um... What do you think? Should we check those closed coffins? Yeah. You take a look at the coffins. You know, there's two that are opened and empty, and there's three that are closed. Should we check one? Do you think that Vincent is in one of them? Who's <laughs> <It was> Vincent? <laughs> Vincent! Oh, the friendly vampire. Vincent Valentine! <laughs> 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 which one will we check? Uh, which one will we check? So I don't mind. You decide. Okay. There's two. There's two to the center of the room, and there's one to the, like the right. I'll check okay. the one to the right. Well, can I check a different one? Yes, you can at the same time. Yeah. Look so at the you, one in the middle. You look at the one in the middle, and uh, Bertina looks at the one to the right. And uh, you f you open up the one in the middle faster than Bertina can open hers because she's younger and yeah, just struggling a bit with the, the lid. And as you open it, you instantly recognize uh, your wife, Paula, and she appears to be sleeping. Paula! Yeah, you recognize Paula. And uh, then uh, Bertina opens up the one with uh, the other one to the right and instantly recognizes uh, Kathy there. Oh my god. Kathy. Yeah. 
and her eyes op her eyes open up like lasers and she hisses and she jumps out of the coffin and tries to make a strike at you. Do I have any weapons? You do. You have your longsword. And you also, okay, have, you also have a stake, which might be easier to manage inside these small confines. Okay, I'll pull the stake out and try and wrestle her to the ground. Okay, could I get a d20 roll? 19. Okay, yeah, she rolled a 12. Yeah, so you're, she went for like a grab, and you've grappled her to the ground, and you're going to go on with the stake, is it? Yeah. Okay, so could I get... Um, let's see now. Could I get another d20, but this time with advantage? So let me just roll it twice and give me the best number. Uh, nine was the best one I got. Okay, so that you, you get the stake, and you miss the, the heart, and instead you, you manage to get it <laughs> squarely in one of her arms, disabling one of her arms and kind of pinning her to the ground. Mm. Um, at the meantime, this obviously catches Jamie's attention. Uh, the other coffin appears to be rustling as well, and Paula is, uh, is basically catatonic. I'm so. shouting him to close the lid. Jamie you're, Jamie, you're up. Jamie, close the lid. Yeah, I close the lid. I close the lid, yeah. Okay, so you're, you basically find whatever you can nearby. You sit on the thing. But, like, they're, they are, like, they're wooden coffins. So, they are, like, if there's something inside, it will be able to open it. Mm -hmm. the, only way, the only way you're going to keep it sealed is if you, like, sit on top of it or put, like, another coffin on top of it. So, so the other one that isn't opened is rustling, is it? Yeah. So that one we have to keep closed. Yeah, if you want. Well, it's up to you. You can handle it however you want. Well, I'm going to fire my thingamajiggy at Kathy. Hold on, I have an idea before you do that. Okay. Put things over those two lids and we'll try and overpower this vampire and see is this the real Kathy or not. Okay. What are you going to do? Uh, get Jamie to find something to put lids okay, on Okay, so she takes, she takes another lid from the other coffins that are open and just throws it quickly over the other one. And makes her way over and to Kathy. Help me overpower this vampire so we can talk to it. Okay, there's no sk there's no skill that. checks required. She's also like a young young girl in her twenties. So um yeah, you know, you've already got her to the ground with it. Yes, yeah, so there's no there's no check. She's already just <clears> one of the arms is disabled. So she's she is pinned to the ground by both of you. And she's okay. like screaming wildly and wriggling and uh making a lot of noise. Mm. At the same time the storm outside is getting worse. Okay, so nothing will probably hear us. So, can Jamie hold her down? Uh, yes. So I get, I take the torch off of him and I hold him and say, "You're going to answer our questions, otherwise I'm going to put you on fire." Okay, as as you're holding uh Kathy and Jamie, as Jamie's holding Kathy, you have your cross is also banging off her arm and burning her arm a little bit. And uh, she uh, like just starts screaming in, in, in intelligibly, and starts to act more feral as time goes by. Mm. She then struggles again more against uh, the grip, but she, yeah, she struggles to get out of the out of the grip of the uh, of Jamie and, and, and the stake in her arm. Mm. And the other uh, the other coffin is starting to open. Okay, it's like we're not going to get much out of this vampire. So, mm. what do you think? Um, oh, she it. struggles again and gets a natural 20. So she's out of there, guys. <laughs> As you're debating what to do, um, she wriggles out like a serpent and uh, runs for the exit. And she's out the exit and she's gone. Quick! Ah, uh, damn it. The other coffin opens and it is uh, a long-toothed individual that you do not recognize and looks fairly ancient. Try shooting it, Dad. Yeah, I will, yeah. Okay, so I get a d20 roll. Um, I'll pull my sword out as well, by the way. Okay. Because I have it ready. 16, that's fine. And can you roll a d8? 5. 5. Um, okay, that's plus 2, no? So it's 5 in total, or 7? 5 in total. Okay, so, I mean, you hit him squarely, but there's not enough to stop him. Do you want to fire off a few more bolts? This thing can fire 3 bolts at the end of the day. Yeah. Okay, so roll two more d20s for the next consecutive shots. Um, seven. Mm hmm And six. Okay, they go flying wildly around the room. Your bolt, your, your crossbow bolt will now need a whole turn to reload. It'll take some time to reload. Um, this guy starts to charge towards you. Um, Jamie can decide to interject if he wants. Oh, sorry, uh, Bertina can interject if, if, if she wants. Yeah, let's charge at him. Okay. Be, yeah. 
You charge on what? Uh, can I get a d20 roll? For your attack? Uh, 15. 15. Okay, well, he rolls a 4. So as he's going towards you, um, he trips over a bit of loose debris on the ground. As you're making your swing, he, he lands up perfectly on the swing <coughs> accidentally, and you just ride him completely in half, and he turns into dust. Huh. Okay, he's, he's gone. <laughs> it was you using your force <laughs> of will, but also him accidentally uh, falling. <laughs> he fell into all the force of your, of your sword. So it's just I'm you. I'm worried just, about that vampire got away. Yeah, you're just in the room alone now at Paula. 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 What do we do? I'm a little bit worried about that vampire that got away. She'll go get help. So. You guys don't have much time to decide here. You have to make a quick decision. I think we should just kill her. That's not our mom. My mom. My mom wouldn't be a vampire. How do you know it's not her? I don't believe she'd do that. And if it's her, and if she's like what, what Kathy's like now, there's no point in trying to talk to her. So we need to get rid of her. You start to hear footsteps up in the oh. upper upper levels. Quite a few. We need to get out of here or we need to kill her. We need to get out of here anyway. I, just, I grab... <laughs> I push the lid off the coffin and get my sword ready to stab Paula. Okay, so you're ready to stab so Paula. That could be real Paula. That could be real, Paula. I wouldn't accept that that's my mother. I don't believe it is. Maybe something's happened to her and we can cure her. No. No time. And we can't leave her like this. Of course we can. We can take her with us. We can knock her out and take her with us. What's that, Sean? Stab her in the heart. Okay, do you want to contest that, uh, Michelle? Jamie? You can do a contested roll. Yeah. Okay, so Sean, I need you to roll a, d- a d20 Paula. there. Paula! Three. Three. Uh, Michelle? Fourteen. So basically, um, Bertina is trying to drive the longsword into Paulina's chest, and Jamie comes in and uh, grabs the sword, preventing it from going into her chest, and at the same time, uh, Jamie, ta- you, prevent, you prevent any, any injury to Paula, and at the same time, Jamie takes uh, four points of damage, and also your hands from the uh, the longsword. How you've got cuts on your fingers from just re- like resisting it. So now you're going to have difficulty using your crossbow. What's wrong I... with you? Like? The I then want... the the sounds of so basically you will not be able to easily interrupt again like that. And as well, the uh, sounds of footsteps outside begin to come fainter. You don't hear wood and you don't hear them on wood anymore. Okay, Probably. we need to hide. Oh, we need to see. hide. Okay. I'm going to tell you right now that there is no good hiding places in 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 there. There's only five no coffins. Uh, vampires would normally have night vision. Um, if you if you're looking for a place to hide, it'd be reasonable that your characters would try to leave the uh, basement. Well, if we're not hearing Why wood we anymore, means it's already on the stairs. Because they're not hearing wood anymore, it means they're already on the stone stairs. Well, no, what that would mean is that they're outside, they're outside but it doesn't, you're not hearing anyone on the stone steps. So you could, you could get out, but uh, you need to hurry on. Um, well, sure. I'm taking okay. Paula with me. Okay. You take, <laughs> <What>? <laughs> okay. Of course I'm taking my oh. wife. Something oh, is wrong with her. She's been... Well, if you take Paula with we'll you, reverse and, it. and the difficulty well, at least you, let me carry her. Yeah, I was going to say, if yeah, you're having difficulty with your hands, that you, that you okay, so you work together, because otherwise you're going to have to drop the crossbow somewhere. So you, you sling the crossbow over, and you both work together carrying. Um, and I carry her on my own. Can I try and carry her uh, on my own? Yes, you could. You could, you could. Yeah, you could put the uh, you could put the long sword on your back, and you could carry Paula in both your hands, and then you'd be disabled for combat. But yes, otherwise you'd be able to do it. And okay. that means Jamie's probably down to having a dagger in one hand and a stake in the other. So why can't you use the crossbow? Um, I suppose they could, uh, Jamie could, yes, but you'd be using it at disadvantage because of the injuries to her hands, uh, his hands. Mm. Maybe it's better. I, maybe better you carry it then. <laughs> but see, if if Jamie carries, then she'll have to, he'll have to drop the uh, the crossbow. If you can't use it anyway, what's the point? You you could carry the crossbow instead on your back. Hmm. They so yeah, you can, case, the long story. How how about that? So, uh, Jamie, yeah. you carry him, and I'll hold the crossbow for you. 
And I'll have my sword okay. ready. Okay. So I'll sling the crossbow over my back and I'll keep my, my, my sword ready. Okay, so you guys make your ways out. Ways out. Bertina makes her way out, hit her way out first because uh, just just faster and probably want to get out first anyway. And you see uh, two characters similar to the ones that you saw downstairs. You see Kathy in the background, and then you see Igor there as well, saying, "Get out! Get out! Get out!" And uh, he's there wielding a blunderbuss. It's a blunderbuss. It's a really old-fashioned shotgun. He's oh. saying that to Kathy, is he? No, to you. To you and Jamie. He's protecting Kathy, yeah. and there's, he's flanked right. by two other uh, characters similar to the ones down in the coffin. Mm. And regardless of how stormy it is, his voice is very clear. Okay. And are we out of the uh, basement yet? You're just standing outside the entrance of the basement. There's wind in your face, and yeah, yeah, yeah you, you, you're just coming up behind uh, Bertina. Should we run? <laughs> you run. <laughs> Where do you want to run to, your friend says? Right. Can we well, run? What do you think? I mean, why not? They're not he attacking us. To get out. You have five seconds yeah. to really decide to here. This is this is a real time encounter, and he um, points the blunderbuss at you again. He says, "I won't tell you again." And he's getting okay, very we'll nervous run. now. We'll so if you run, we'll right, run. Bert can run, Bertina can run no problem. But if Jamie wants to run, she has to leave Paul. He has to leave Paulina Paula behind. Can we just back away? You can start to slow. Yeah, you start to slowly back away, and uh, one of the other two um, and... robed characters there um, sort of hisses and says that uh, that uh, she's one of us. You d you do not get to take her. Can I ask Igor what's going on? Yes, you can. Um, what so you ask to you Paula? ask yeah you ask Igor what's going on. You ask him what happened to Paula, and he says and he says Paula. Drop Paula and leave. I'm hmm. not leaving my wife. Tell me what happened to her. Okay. <clears throat> um, he fires off his blunderbuss and actually misses you and misses Paula and grazes um, Bertina in the leg with a few of the pellets and then is going to reload it. And then two of the uh, guys are, heading, are now starting to charge you. I think okay. my thing is reloaded by now. Um, no, you didn't. You didn't oh. take time to prepare it. it. No, it's not. You fired it and then you left in a hurry, so you, it, it's actually quite slow to reload, reload a crossbow. Because you have to like put it on the ground That's and you do this thing. Yeah, but you, have, you haven't done it yet. But it doesn't reload on its own. You physically have to reload it. You have to say, "I'm reloading my crossbow." What other weapons have I got? You've got a stake and you have a dagger, other... and you can throw the stakes and you can throw the daggers. But, we're, but bear in mind, it's stormy. I think we sh you should put Paula down, and we should both try and take out these vampires coming towards us. I'm not leaving Paula behind, though. Just put her down, and we can fight these vampires off. You don't have to leave her behind. At this point, okay. both of the uh, vampires are in your face, and they both manage to miss. Yes. So you're up for you both up can for combat. Can I reload my crossbow? You, to you. you can, but you're... Well, actually, you know what? You can't, because... You, well, you can, but the, you, the, but the vampire will get, a, will get a free attack on you for doing that, because he's literally in your face. I'm going to attack well, my I'll vampire. I'll stab the really. vampire, so... Okay, so you want to stab the vampire. Okay, so... so can I hold to... out the stake and... Sta can I hold out the stake and, and then start stabbing the vampire? Yeah, you can, yeah. So to roll a d20. Okay. I mean... <laughs> <laughs> what did you roll? <laughs> what five. Mean? You rolled a five. Okay. So you go in with the stake, it hits him in the arm as he defends himself with the arm, and it like breaks in his arm. He's got like this piece of a stake in his arm. You've got a broken stake in your hand. You got loads of them though, so don't worry. And now Bertina's, oh. Bertina's up. Yeah, I, I, I'm, I'm gonna, I'm gonna run towards my dad and and try and kill that vampire on him. Okay. Um, so the vampire in front much, the vampire in front of you I love them. <laughs> the vampire in front of you uh, scratches you and <laughs> scratches your back as you as you try to make your way cutting a few cuts across okay. your back and now roll for your d20 uh, okay 14 14 okay and then roll your d10 d10 5 5 plus 2, plus two. okay so you sever one of his arms off and he recoils back 
um, away from you and, out, and sort of out of the combat. That's the one that was on me, was it? No, the one on, on Jamie. Oh, the one, oh, okay. The yeah. one that was on you came from behind and striked you in the back. He's still behind you. Okay, I'll, I'll turn my attention towards the other one again and charge at him. Okay. Um, he tries to make an attack at you again. Again, he misses. And Igor is now ready to uh, take another shot. Um, Kathy has disappeared. And you... Okay, so roll your d20. Uh, 16. The big 16. one. <laughs> That's a big hit. And damage? Yeah. Uh, five again, so uh, plus two, seven. Okay. So you call you, you, you swing at him, you cause a huge amount of uh, his torso to be like chucked out, and if it was a normal person, they would be dead, but this person is just winded, and he sort of backs away from you. And then Igor is ready to take his shot, and the storm begins to like, it doesn't calm, but you feel like you're, you feel like you're in the eye of the storm, and you hear a lot of footsteps around you. And on top, on top of the roof, you see what looks like five more vampires jumping up on the roof. You can hear there's a lot of commotion in the town around you. And the other guys around you start to back off a little bit. Igor's looking around. And um, uh, floating in the sky is a character with very long robes. And he says, uh, Greetings, my friends. I am Vladimir Jarkshire. Welcome to my town. Of course you were. <laughs> we were looking for you in the coffin. We thought you were having a nap. <laughs> I only receive my guests at, at the Grand Manor. But unfortunately, oh. my friends, we'll have to leave it here for this session. <laughs> <laughs> Until we meet again. Hmm. I just imagine that, like, Sephiroth coming down or something. <laughs> 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 He definitely has long hair, like Sephiroth, yeah. <laughs> That's it. Like, this is the end. So Bertina and Jamie are going to die. Pretty <laughs> much. You don't but know that. Won. Anything could happen. Oh, Double because old, <laughs> Jamie wouldn't leave the love of his life alone. All right, we'll leave it there. I'll, I'll stop the, the recording. Okay. Wait, okay, wait. So... Uh, some, someone should say something like, like, you know, like the way they end the Dragon Ball Z episode, It'd be funny. How do they end? <laughs> how do they end the Dragon Ball Z episode? You know, like now next time. Well, I don't know what's you gonna know happen what I mean, next time. It's... <laughs> like, will I don't know. You know the kind of silly stuff they say. <laughs> Something funny. Okay, okay, okay. So let's like, see. Like, will next... will Jamie? Yeah. I don't know. Okay, so so next. Okay. Next time on Darkshire Adventures, will uh, will Jamie ever see his wife again? Will Paula actually ever wake up? Will Igor even learn how to use a shotgun and hit anything? Who is this character, Vladimir, and what does he want? And who are all these other people? Find out next time on Darkshire Adventures. No. Was that good? <laughs> yeah. Big question mark. <laughs> <laughs> Only the dice, only the dice know what will happen next. Mm. <laughs> Very true. Jamie knows what's going to happen next. He's going to kill everybody. Throw <laughs> <laughs> so the dice at everyone.